friends, I'm Mrs. E. Thanks for joining me again for another reading lesson. And let's get started. I will learn to use context clue strategies. And our success criteria is I can use the synonym and antonym strategies. And another criteria we have here is I can use the word part strategy. Before we, be, um, before we begin, will you please get some materials? Um, you will need something to write on. You could get a notebook, lined paper, or whiteboard, and something to write with, like pencil, pen, marker. You can pause the video until you can get those materials. We're gonna refer back to our ideas, the acronym of ideas, and we are going to take a look at the antonym strategy and the synonym strategy. Antonym is opposite, is a word that means has an opposite meaning, so it's an opposite word, and synonym, it means similar. So let's take a look at synonym, and when you are using this strategy, you are looking for similar words. A synonym context clue is one or two words that mean almost the same as the unknown word. Let's take a look at this example here. The young girl was very aloof. She, was, she, was, she always seemed unsociable, unapproachable, and uninterested. What does the word aloof mean in this sentence? Here I see some synonyms, so similar words in the sentence. The young girl was very aloof. She always seemed, here are similar words, unsociable, unapproachable, and uninterested. So I can figure out the meaning of aloof by looking at these synonyms that are here in the sentence. Aloof means unsociable, unapproachable, and it could also mean uninterested. Let's take a look at another example here. The brothers began to altercate over the game. This was not the first time they argued over it. What does the word altercate mean here? Here's a hint. Synonym context clues are often hidden in the surrounding sentences. So I'm looking at the sentence after that. And yep. And I am seeing not the first time also, and it says argued. So it's giving me a synonym to what altercate means. It means to argue. Let's take a look at this sentence. Diana appeared to be very moral and upstanding young lady, but those who knew her knew that she was iniquitous. What does the word iniquitous mean in this sentence? Here, I am going to use the antonym strategy, the opposite word, because if I see here, the word but right here tells us that there are two parts of the sentence that represents opposite, different points of view about Diana. Here it says she appeared to be very moral and upstanding, but those who knew her, they knew that she was iniquitous. So iniquitous must be the opposite of being moral and upstanding. And being very moral and upstanding, it has something to do with being honest and respectable, and moral means relating to what is right and wrong in human behavior. Here are some signal words that you can look for, opposed to, however, but, although, nonetheless, otherwise, instead, on the contrary. These are some of the signal words. When you see them in a sentence, you know that I could anticipate maybe there's an opposite word, an antonym in the sentence to help me figure out the unknown word. Let's try this one. Anna was very outgoing as opposed to her coy sister. What does the word coy mean in this sentence? 
Did you use the antonym strategy? I saw the signal words as opposed to. So Anna was very outgoing, but I'm seeing her sister who is opposite of her and who has a opposite antonym of outgoing, which is coy. So I know she is not outgoing, so it could mean maybe bashful and shy. And let's practice writing some synonyms. Aloof, another word for aloof is unsociable. Altercate, another word for that is argue or dispute. And how about some antonyms? So antonym, you can write the word that it means opposite word. And here's some antonyms that we learned. Iniquitous, the antonym of that is upstanding and honest. So a person who is iniquitous would not be honest and would not be upstanding. Koi, the antonym of koi is outgoing. You can pause the video so you can finish writing these words. Now let's take a look at, look at another word um, strat, context clue strategy, and it is the word parts. Well, word parts is where we are breaking down the different parts of a word. So we're gonna take a look at Greek and Latin roots, prefixes, and suffixes. So the word parts, one of the strategy is knowing the Greek and Latin roots. Greek and Latin roots, they help to form the root or the base of many um, English words. So learning many Greek and Latin roots, it can help you figure out words that are unfamiliar. So let's take a look at some other Greek and Latin roots today. V-I-S, vis, and A-U-D, odd. So V-I-S, vis, the meaning of that Greek and Latin root is see and look. So if I know this has a meaning of see or look, and when I see this word, visualize, I know it has something to do with to see or look. And let me read the sentence to see if I can get some more context clues. Even though I had never been there, I could visualize the beautiful beaches of Oregon in my mind. I know that it has something to do with seeing or looking, and I know it must be something has to do with seeing it in my mind. So that word visualize, it means to form a mental image of something or to imagine. Now I can check to see if my my um, my guess of the meaning of this word is correct by using the dictionary. I figured out the word using context clue and Greek and Latin roots. And then I can also go and see the word visualize in the dictionary to make sure that's what that word means. Let's try another one. Odd, A-U-D, it means to hear. And here has the word is audible, and I see that it has the Greek, the root of odd in there, and I know it has something to do with hear. So this word must mean have something to do with hearing. I turn up the volume of my phone so that it would be audible over the noise from the street. So it must be something that I had turned up the volume so that I can hear over the noise from the street. And the word audible, therefore, is able to be heard. Well, let's try another word part strategy, and it's the prefix. Prefix is a group of letters that are placed before the root of a word. One of the prefixes is pre, the letters P-R-E, which means before. Some of the examples that contain the prefix pre are words like prefix, just like the word that we were just talking about, prefix, precaution, preheat, prepare. So I know these words all have something to do with before. For example, if I look at preheat, I know that word 
I remember that word from the oven. I know that we preheat the oven so that we could bake. So I know it's something that I do before. How about suffix? It's a group of letters that are placed at the end of the word. Prefix was before the word. Well, this one is, is at the end. Let me give you an example, like able at the end of the word. It means to be, can be done. So for example, I would have understand and I added the suffix of able. So it becomes understandable. It can be understood. Recognize and then I add the suffix of able. So it becomes recognizable, dependable. Let's go ahead and make some more list of Greek and Latin roots, which can help us figure out new words. So in our notebook, maybe you could start a reading journal. And I am going to create two, I'm going to draw two vertical lines to create three columns. So here I go. I'm going to draw one vertical line line going down this way, and then another line going this way. Now I have created three columns. And also a horizontal line right here. Now I'm going to title these on the top. So here I am going to create this one to be the Greek and Latin root. I am making a topic right here for this column. Then in here, I am going to write the meaning of the roots that I would list here. Meaning. And in this column, I am going to write examples of those Greek and Latin roots. All right, you ready? So let's go ahead and make a list of Greek and Latin roots that could help us. The first one that I can list here is, for example, let's say seven. I'm going to put a dash next to this because there could be other letters and that could um, add to this root. So cent, the meaning of cent is hundred. Hundred. Well, let's think of some words, some examples that have scent in the word. For example, my math, in my math, I learned the word centimeter. As you can see, there's the Greek and Latin root, scent, centimeter. Can you think of some? How about century? which has to do with 100 years, century. And another one that I can add here is centennial. Sen. Yeah, this one has T here, but it's going to say centennial with two, I, two N's and I-A-L, centennial. And during our writing in our journals together, feel free to pause and catch up if you need to. Now I'm going to draw a line, another horizontal line this way, so I can get another Greek and Latin root on this page. My next Greek and Latin root that I like to add here is the root form. F-O-R-M, form. Well, the meaning of this root is shape. Can you think of some words that have form in it? Conform. And as you can see, this root comes at the end of the word, conform. Any others?
format. Big shape. So if I know format, I can also add formation. Just taking form, just taking shape. And I'm going to draw another horizontal line going this way. So I can add more Greek and Latin roots. So let's go ahead and add another one here. And we're going to add micro. Micro, I've heard of this word micro. And micro, the meaning of micro is small. So for example, I have heard of microscopic. microscopic and something that is small that might mention something like that it could be like microcomputer I think it means something small microcomputer Great work. Let's go ahead and add another line here this way. I make your list is looking really great. Let's go ahead and add another Greek and Latin to our list. How about something like geo? Can you think of some words with geo? The meaning of geo is earth. Do you think of, can you think of any words with geo in it? Something like geology. Geology, so a study of earth. And I want to bring attention to where you are. Uh, I want to bring bring this out to you guys. This is ology. Ology, when you see a word with ology in it, it has to do with, this is also a Greek and Latin word. It means study of. So I know this is study of earth. Well, here's another word that has geo in it. Geography. geography. Well, let's go back and revisit our learning target once again to see how we did today. Our learning target was I would learn to use context clue strategies and our success criteria was that we will learn and be able to use the synonym and antonym strategies. And also I learned the I can use the word part strategy. So we learned these three different strategies today. Well, can you explain what these context clue strategies are? Well, great work today. I'm so proud of you today. You've learned lots of different strategies to help you figure out new words. I hope you'll join me again next time as we read together and learn together. And don't forget, reading is awesome. to rock some more division. I think everybody did a really good job last time and we have some more to go.
Okay, so last time on Math with Mooney, like I said, we did some division. And what we did was we used the inverse operation of multiplication to check our answers. And I think we did really good. And we also discussed place value and its importance when we're trying to figure out division. So today we have a little bit more to go. But first, let me finish that joke that I left you um, hanging with. So why did the triangle make the basketball team over the square? Because she always made three pointers. Okay, like for real, that's kind of funny, right? Okay, let's get to our learning target and success criteria. So you're going to recognize the learning target as similar or the same as last time. So I can find whole number quotients of multi-digit whole numbers using various methods, okay? So we're going to look at how we're going to do that this time. So we're going to find quotients of multi-digit whole numbers, but we're going to explore the rectangular array this time. And then we're going to compare it with the American Standard Algorithm and that to see which one you prefer, okay? So we'll start with kind of examining that. All right, first let's talk about what is division. Okay, I realized I didn't really cover that last time. So in case you're having a problem kind of envisioning what it is, there's kind of two ways to describe division. One way is this that you see on the screen. It could be dividing things into equal groups. And what this specific uh, picture would look like is eight divided by four equals two. Um, Kara has eight Legos and wanted to share with four friends. How many Legos did each friend get, right? So we know that each friend got two. So this might be a good time to take a quick screenshot if you're still wondering what division is, okay? Now there's another type of division, right? It's all, it's all division, but there's another way and it can be repeated subtraction or repeatedly taking away from groups. So we're gonna look at this number line and talk about what I mean, okay? So if we start with nine and we're taking away three groups each time, when we get to zero, that's what we've been doing. So nine divided by three is three. So three is the number that you've been taking away. Um, this would also be a good time to take a screenshot if you're still wondering, like, what is division, right? I thought this was a good place to start. Let's go back over some math vocabulary from last time. Okay, so I want to make sure we remember our divisor and our dividend and our quotient. Um, those are math terms that are going to come up, especially in sixth grade. Um, and they're going to come up as you move forward with math. So it's important to kind of envision these and kind of think to yourself how to do it. I mean, I'll be honest, sometimes I'm like, wait, what number should I divide? And I have to think to myself, oh, divisor, dividend, quotient. So um, this you can take a screenshot of as well. It's also from last time we were together. So if you already have that screenshot, no worries. Now, this new one is going to be showing us the area model rectangular array or division box method. And this is what it looks like. Now, don't feel overwhelmed. You don't know what this is. It's okay. So take a quick screenshot or camera if you're on the TV, and uh, we will go over it slowly. So no worries there. Okay. Let's talk about place value. So now we moved into the thousands, and I want to make sure you understand we're going to be using thousands from here on out. Okay, so let's start with our warm up and kind of go back over the standard algorithm, the American standard algorithm um, process. Okay, so you start with divide, then you multiply, then you subtract again. I'm not a big fan of memorization, but this is just kind of the steps. So it might help you to write these three down on your, um, you know, notebook paper or something like that. Um, we're keeping in mind place value. So in this case, 27 doesn't go into three. However, it does go into 35. 27 goes into 35 one time. Then you bring down, so you multiply one times 27. We know one times any number is its own number. So then you subtract 35 minus 27. I'm just going to do a counting up thing. So I know that that's eight. And then you bring down that other number in the ones place, that's 81. And then I'm going to do some quick mental math to decide how many times does 27 go into 81. So I'm going back to that division part. And what do you guys think? Yeah, three, right? So, and you might even estimate like, you know, 30 goes into 90, that type of thing, um, even though 81 goes down to 80. So let's review. This is what it looks like. Okay, so we're talking about 
the type of uh, American standard algorithm. Now, I'm going to own up to something. Last time I did the video, I didn't talk about the fact that we use this in America, but there are so many other countries that do things different ways, and those ways are great, too. In Federal Way School District, we respect all cultures, and so I want to make sure if your parents are showing you something different, that's great, too. Okay? All right, joke. Why is six afraid of seven? Hopefully you guys know this joke. It's kind of common. Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> like seven, eight, nine's in order. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, okay. These jokes are just getting dumber and dumber, and I love it. I hope you love it too. All right, let's try this first one together. So again, this is the time where you're getting your supplies. So if you're watching on TV, realize I've given you a lot of time. I'm kind of slowly drawing these things. Um, if you already have your supplies, give yourself a pat on the back because you know that you need supplies when you're watching the math videos. Um, so you can have pencil paper, whiteboard marker. You definitely want an eraser. If uh, it's taking you a little bit of time to find the supplies and you're on the computer, this is a good time to pause. Otherwise, I kind of drew out the time so you would be able to get your supplies and be ready for the next screen because we're gonna do this together, okay? Okay, so we're gonna take 3,358 divided by 46, okay? When we're doing the box method, we're gonna create a box for each place value. And if you notice, 3,358 has four place values, the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, the ones. So then we're gonna set it up in expanded form. Remember fourth grade, you went over that like a lot. So 3,000 plus 300 plus 50 plus eight. Then we're gonna put the 46 on the left there because we're gonna be dividing that into it. Now, mentally, I'm telling myself, oh, 50 goes into 3,060 times. So how can I figure this out going based off of 46 since 46 is close to 50? So what are, what are you thinking with that? Yeah, so 60 times, right? And 60 times 46 is 2,760. But let me tell you, I don't do that mentally. I use my pencil and paper. So go to your notebook and multiply those together. You're going to want to use your tools. There's a reason why you have it. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to double check, make sure, yes, it is 2,760. Okay, so we're going to go back up here. The next step is to subtract. Now, I'm doing some mental math, okay? I'm not going to subtract all those zeros. I'm going to count up right? So 60 plus 40 is the next 100. So that's 2,800. And then uh, 2,800 plus 200 is 3,000. So I'm going to actually count up. And that's something you probably learned in third, fourth, and fifth grade. So do utilize those skills. So now that we have 240, we're going to change that 300 and add the 240 plus 300, which is 540. Now, how many times does 46 go into 540? I'm going to tell myself, Four times 10, 46 times 10 is 460. That's like easy, right? So hopefully you're getting that 10 times as many. And we have 80 left over. We're going to take that 80 and put that in the next column. We're going to add it to the 50. So 50 plus 80 is 130. Now, how many times does 46 go into 130? Twice. Yep. So because it's close to 50, right? So 130 minus 92. Again, I'm going to count up 92 plus 8. And then we have 100 and then 130, 38. 38 plus 8 is, yeah, 46. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm purposely making the numbers even so we're not confused. So then you add all the numbers on the top. 60 plus 10 plus 2 plus 1 is 73. Okay. Now, do you remember yesterday, we want to check our math. So let's make sure we got the right answer. Let's take 73 times 46, or quotient times our divisor. And let's see if we get the answer, the dividend, the, the thing that we were looking for before. Mm -hmm. 3,358. So I remember, ah, yeah, that's the answer I got. So I feel really good about the 73 being the answer. Okay, so now I want you to try using the area model. I'm going to give you a full two minutes, and this is a really good time to take your time and work through it. Remember, you need a box for each of your dividends 
um, place value, okay? And in case you missed it, you should be working out this problem right now. All right, and it stands to say that if you're on the computer and you want to go back and look at that area model thing again, absolutely do that. I don't expect anyone to memorize it off the bat, okay? Remember, we're exploring area model and we're going to compare it to that American standard algorithm to make sure which one do you prefer, okay? You have a little bit of time still. Okay, it's time for the spoiler alert. So again, this goes kind of fast, so I wanna make sure you look at it. Remember, we need a box for each one of our place values, so 2,000. We're gonna put it in expanded form first, so 2,000. Now, in the hundreds, there's a zero. You need to account for that zero, okay? So 2,000, zero, 64. Okay, so we're looking at 24 divided by 2,000. Now, I know it can't be times 10, right? I know that. So I know, oh, could it be nine? Oh, it's eight. So I'm working through that mental math. And again, I'm going to count up. So 80 plus 1,920 is 2,000. I'm going to bring that 80 over to the hundreds, the next column. And that 80 is going to be divided by 24. That'll be three times. Three times 24 is 72. Now you're like, wow, Miss Mooney, you're doing 24 is like so easy. I'm going to tell you the trick, okay? So then you have eight, you bring the eight over to 60, and you change the 60 to 68. Now, does anybody know what 24 is, like in real life? Yeah, 24 hours in a day. So I know 24, 48 uh, 72, 96, right? I just know these numbers, right? So you're going to look for common numbers. Now we know that 2 times 24 is 48, and you should just be able to see that's 20, okay? Um, if you're not, you need to spend some more time with that kind of mental math and practice that a little bit more. Then we have the 20 plus the 4 is 24. We have one more. We're going to add all the top up, and our final answer is 86, okay? Um, so let's go back over the learning target and make sure we're really like hitting on what we did. So I wanted you all to be able to try that uh, array method. And obviously, if we were in class, we would go, you know, slower and we would do it more. But you have time to practice on your own. I wanted you to explore this new one so you can compare it with what you learned last time. And I want you to choose which one do you like best, okay? So then what you're going to do is compare the two, okay? So let's start with a joke um, before we kind of explore that a little bit more. So who's the king of the pencil case? I'm drawing a clue right here. Do you know? The ruler, so like a ruler and a person who rules land is called a ruler. Okay, so we're going to try the same um, problem using the American Standard Algorithm. So it's the same problem and I have the same solution, but I want you to work through it so you're able to compare the two processes to see which one you like best. You have a little bit of time right now. If you're on the computer, you might pause. If you're on TV, just, you know, work through it. Again, using the American standard algorithm.
All right, spoiler time. So pause if you're on the computer. Otherwise, let's work this out. So we know A times 24 is 192. You're going to subtract those two, and you're going to get the answer of 14. You're going to bring down the 1, have a 4. Then how many times does 24 go into 144? That's 86. So 2,064 divided by 24 is 86, which is the same answer. Okay, so people's brains work differently. So I want you to think about it. Which did you prefer? Okay. All right, now that you thought about which you prefer, I want you to rate your understanding. So remember, one is you don't understand at all, five is you can teach it to somebody, and then kind of in between there. So a lot of you should be at three, fours, or fives. Some of you might still be in the ones and twos, and I highly recommend you go back and watch the videos, okay? Okay, we're gonna do one last one using whichever method you prefer, okay? So 3,312 divided by 36. What is your answer? I'm going to give you time again. So remember, use the array or the standard algorithm or something maybe your parent or guardian told you about. Okay, so whatever method works for you. Just a little bit more time left. So work through whichever one works best for you. And I'm just gonna give you the answer. So I'm not gonna work through it. Um, so make sure you have your quotient. All right, spoiler alert, coming up, 92. So if you got 92, great job. If you didn't, just keep working at it. No worries, okay? Let's do one last joke for this lesson, okay? So what do you get when you cross a, a dog and a calculator? So what do they have in common? A friend you can count on. And that's all the time uh, we have today. So thank you so much. Hopefully you're feeling confident in division and if you're not, I really invite you to take the opportunity to look through our videos at Federal Way Public Schools, the ones that I've made. You might want to go back in other skills like the multiplication videos we put out and other things so you can continue to work through this process. I'm really proud of the hard work that you're doing and I hope that you feel kind of better about division. Hola chicos, bienvenidos a nuestra siguiente lección de división. Vamos a seguir practicando. Entonces, si no viste la primera, la última lección sobre división y estimación, tal vez debes ir a buscarlo, a ver la primera lección, porque hoy vamos a poner a práctica lo que aprendimos la última vez. ¿Ok? Si quieres intentarlo, a ver si puedes, yo creo que sí. No es nada muy, muy complicado. ¿Ok? Y vamos a explicar bien los pasos. Vamos a seguir con ese video. A ver qué pasa. ¿Ok? Ustedes son muy inteligentes. Claro que sí se puede hacer las divisiones. ¿Ok? Entonces, hoy vas a ocupar un papel, como siempre, un lápiz. ¿Ok? 
Vamos a trabajar, ¿ok? Bueno, vamos a empezar. Suerte, chicos. Debe de tener tu papel, tu lápiz. Y vamos a resolver ese problema de división. Una compañía de juguetes empaca 504 robots en 21 cajas. Cada caja tiene el mismo número de robots. Muestra cómo podría estimar el número de robots que hay en cada caja. Pueden poner pausa ahora, ¿ok? Este, sí, pon pausa, toma un momento, piénsalo y vamos a volver a ver el problema. Ok, bueno, vamos a ver qué tienen. Vamos a marcar la información importante, ¿ok? Problemas razonados. Sabemos que siempre hay números, o sea, los números están importantes, ¿verdad? Tenemos 504 robots en 21 cajas. Aquí está esa palabra otra vez. Cada. Eso quiere decir, me está diciendo, me está gritando. Tengo que hacer una división, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que me está diciendo. Entonces, ¿Qué voy a dividir? Vamos a tomar esos dos números. Vamos a intentar 504 entre 21, ¿no? ¿Por qué? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? 504 robots entre 21 cajas. ¿Cuántas cajas necesito? ¿O cuántos vienen en cada caja? ¿Ok? Este, si te acuerdas, vamos a cambiar eso a un problema de multiplicación, ¿ok? Entonces, para hacer eso, o sea, el producto va a ser 504, ¿ok? Lo voy a poner aquí, 504. Eso va a ser el producto final. Entonces, eso quiere decir que un número por un número es 504. Entonces, yo voy a hacer este 21 por un número es igual a 504, ¿ok? Si te acuerdas, la última vez estuvimos haciendo este, multiplicaciones y estimaciones, ¿ok? Vamos a averiguar, ¿ok? Estimar, aquí dice en el problema, ¿ok? No dice que tiene que hallar la respuesta exacta, ¿ok? Importante, ojo, ¿ok? Vamos a hacer una estimación. Entonces, vamos a empezar... Hasta que llegamos a 504, ¿verdad? Vamos a empezar con 21 por, ¿quién sabe? Vamos a estimar 10, ¿verdad? 21 por 10. A ver, porque estamos intentando llegar a ese número, ¿ok? Vamos a poner una pregunta aquí porque no sabemos, ¿ok? Entonces, estamos intentando llegar a 504. Entonces, 21 por 10, pues fácil, ¿verdad, chicos? Nada más vamos a poner el 0, es 210. Siguiente. Vamos a hacer 21 por, ¿quién sabe? Debe de estar gritando las respuestas en tus casas, ¿ok? 21 por, este, vamos a intentar con 20. ¿Qué es 21 por 20? 21 por 20 va a ser... 420, ¿verdad? Porque 21 por 2, 42. ¡Pum! Ahí está. ¿Ok? Ahora, intentamos con 21 por 30. ¿Qué es 21 por 30? 21 por 30. Vamos a multiplicar 21 por 3. Va a ser... 63 y nada más agregamos el 0 ahí que es 630. Ojo, 504 es nuestra respuesta, ¿verdad? Eso está entre, aquí, ¿verdad? Entre 420, 630 está 504, ¿ok? Entonces, como estamos estimando, tú tienes que hacer una estimación. ¿Qué crees que va a ser nuestra respuesta? Pues, ¿qué es un número entre 20 y 30? 25, ¿verdad? Entonces, podemos, podemos intentar 21 por, estamos estimando, ¿verdad, chicos? 21 por 25, 
Okay, si quieren poner pausa, si ustedes quieren intentar, se puede. Yo no sé cuál es la respuesta. No importa. Hicimos una estimación, ¿verdad? Tenemos una estimación más o menos exacta, ¿no? O sea, es una estimación, entonces nunca va a ser exacto. Pero casi, ¿sí? Casi. ¿Ok? Muy bien, chicos. Vamos a ver unas otras maneras de resolver ese problema. Vimos en la última lección, si viste, este, unas cajitas. Sí, estuvieron usando unas cajas. Este, aquí los números compatibles son números cercanos a los valores, valores del dividendo y el divisor reales que permiten multiplicar o dividir usando datos básicos. ¿ok? 520 son números compatibles que son cercanos a 504 y 21, ¿verdad? Es otra forma, otra manera que ustedes pueden usar para resolver ese problema, ¿ok? 500 entre 20, ¿qué es? ¿Cuántas veces va 20 en 500? Hmm. Hmm. Vamos a pensar, ¿ok? Puedes hacer aquí 20 por un número es igual a 500, ¿verdad que sí? Aquí tenemos una relación inversa que podemos usar, ¿ok? Pero vamos a hacer ese primero. ¿Cuántas veces va 20 entre 500? Este, podemos estimar, ¿verdad? O si ustedes saben, ¿qué es 20? ¿Ok? Podemos usar la misma estrategia empezando con 20 por 10. Ok, 20 por 10, 200. Tal vez se van a dar cuenta de un patrón. 20 por 20, ¿qué es? 20 por 20, 2 por 2, ¿verdad? 4, 2 ceros, 400. Ok, ah, ok, ya, ya casi. 20. Por 30, que es 2 por 6. Mm. Eso va a ser 600, ¿verdad? Es demasiado. Ok, entonces sabemos que nuestra respuesta es entre, o sea, 400 y 600, ¿verdad? Es 500. Y la respuesta que queremos hallar es entre 20 y 30, que es? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué tal? 25, ¿ok? Entonces, estamos estimando, ¿verdad? No tiene que ser exacto, pero es más o menos 25, ¿ok? Vamos a ver otra forma de hacerlo. En algún momento, si estás confundido, si quieres poner pausa, si no entiendes lo que está pasando, pon pausa, ¿ok? Tome un momentito, ve el problema, ¿ok? Y puede siempre adelantar en el video o, o ir para atrás, ¿ok? Para hacer un repaso. Esos, esos videos son a tu ritmo, ¿ok? Son a tu ritmo, ¿ok? Eh, puedes usar la relación inversa entre la multiplicación y la división para estimar un cociente. Eso es lo que hicimos la última vez. O sea, 500 entre 21, ¿qué? ¿Quién sabe? O 21 por un número es igual a 504. Eso es complicado también, ¿verdad? Pero lo que podemos hacer para que sea más fácil es 21 por 10, 21 por 20, 21 por 30. Bueno, ya sabemos. ¿okay? 504 entre esos números. Entonces, nuestra respuesta está aquí entre 20 y 30. ¿okay? Ojo, chicos, estimar un cociente. ¿Sabes qué es un cociente? Ese es un cociente, ¿ok? Un, un cociente es como, o sea, es, es la respuesta de un problema de división, ¿ok? Eso es el, el cociente, ¿ok? Bueno, chicos, entonces se supone que sería 25, 25 aquí, tuvimos 25 acá, 25 acá también, wow, ok. Entonces se supone que sería 25. Si quieren este revisarlo se puede ok se puede revisar si eso es que quieren hacer este sería multiplicar 21 por 25 ok 
25 es la respuesta que queremos. Estima el cociente 342 entre 38 muestra tu trabajo. ¿Qué va a hacer, chicos? ¿Qué? Vamos a ver. Tenemos 340, 2 entre 38. ¿Ok? Bueno, well, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Vamos a tomar 38. ¿Sí? Podemos multiplicar por 10. Podemos hacer 38 por 10. Que sería... 380. Pues chicos, hay que seguir. Yo tengo que seguir con eso. Estamos multiplicando, o sea, estamos buscando una relación inversa. Este, obviamente, si, si yo hago 38 por 20, eso va a ser demasiado porque ya mi 380 es más de mi 342. Entonces, vamos a escribir eso como multiplicación, ¿verdad? Y si escribimos eso, vamos a tener 38 por un número, ¿verdad? Es igual a 342, ¿ok? Si tú tuviste que averiguar qué número, qué número vas a escoger. Hmm. Pues tiene que ser menos de 10, ¿verdad? Porque 10 es demasiado. Pero fíjense bien, chicos. Podemos hacer una estimación de, de restar aquí también. 380 menos 38. Parece que va a ser 342, ¿no? Entonces, yo me imagino que la respuesta sería 9, ¿ok? Y lo que yo hice en mi mente es yo fui y yo vi, ok, 380 menos 342, eso va a ser que, pues ya puedo hacerlo mentalmente, ¿verdad? Pero ser, eso va a ser 38, ok, entonces yo veo que la diferencia es 1, o sea, un 38, entonces yo creo que este, el cociente estima el cociente, yo creo que sería 9, ¿ok? Puede decir 10 también, puede dejarlo así, o sea, estima, no tiene que ser exacto, ¿verdad? Pero estamos practicando estimando, ¿ok? Toma un momento, ve eso y vamos a hacer el siguiente. Unos números más grandes, ¿verdad? Vamos a estimar el cociente 1103 entre 23. ¿Ok? ¿Cómo va a ser eso? Pues, vamos a hacer eso. Vamos a escribirlo como multiplicación, operaciones inversas, ¿verdad? 23 por un número es igual a 1103. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver, chicos. ¿Ok? Vamos a pensar bien. Vamos a hacerlo de 10, 23 por 10 es pues, 230. Entonces falta mucho, ¿verdad? Ok, 230. En este caso, ok, ustedes pueden brincar, pueden hacerlo. Si te sientes más cómodo, puedes hacer, ok, 23 por 20, ok. 23 por 20 que es 460, ¿ok? Ve que estamos brincando 260 o 230 cada vez. Entonces, o sea, se supone que este 23 por 30, aún no vamos a llegar. Entonces, podemos brincar eso. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos estimando, ¿ok? No queremos trabajar mucho si no tenemos que, ¿verdad? Queremos llegar a la respuesta y ya. Entonces, vamos a brincar el 30. Vamos a hacerlo por 40. ¿Ok? ¿Cómo voy a hacer eso, chicos? Lo que yo voy a hacer es 23 por 4. ¿Ok? Si no puedes hacerlo en tu cabeza, puedes escribirlo. Es fácil hacer. 3 por 4 es 12. 
Pon mi uno aquí, 4 por 2, sí, es 1. O sea, 4 por 2 es 8 más 1 es 9. Este, entonces voy a poner mi 9 aquí, es 92. Pero voy a agregar el 0 aquí. Entonces, ¿qué va a pasar cuando lo multiplico por 50? Ok, 23 por 50. Pues va a ser un número mucho más grande, ¿no? 23 por 5. Vamos a quitar eso. Vamos a borrar eso aquí. 23 por 5. 3 por 5 sería 15. Pongo mi 5 aquí. 1 aquí arriba. 5 por 2. ¿Sí? 5 por 2. 10 más 1. 11. Entonces tengo 1.000. 150, porque tengo que agregar el cero, ¿verdad? Entonces, se supone que mi respuesta va a ser entre 40 y 50. ¿Por qué? Porque 1103, 1000, perdón, 1103 es entre 920 y 1150. Entonces, ¿qué va a ser mi respuesta? Pues, no sé exactamente. Este, yo puedo estimar algo como, o sea, puedes hacer 45, pero si tú crees que estamos 100, o sea, 1,103, está más cerca a 1,150, tú puedes estimar este 47, ¿ok? 47, 48, ¿ok? Estamos estimando, no tiene, no tiene que ser exacto, ¿ok, chicos? Muy bien, acuérdense. O sea, estamos haciendo divisiones estimando, ¿verdad? Multiplicando por 10. ¿Ok, chicos? Este, mucha suerte. Si tienes unas dudas o preguntas, puedes eh, ver las cosas que hicimos en el video. ¿Ok? Suerte. Hasta la próxima.